The improved version of Ford's fourth generation Focus ST is now smarter and more sophisticated inside. In hatch or estate guise with manual or paddle shift automatic transmission, it's a car that's easy to get the most from and a machine you can enjoy to the full on your favourite road without afterwards having to pay for it with the kind of over firm ride you simply don't want in everyday traffic. Ultimately, so many quick cars can feel, well, rather irrelevant. Here's one that's anything but. ST is a badge that, when it comes to Ford, stands for quick but not concussive, a performance level that sits just above the company's fast but family-friendly ST line models. A badge applied to the kind of car a red-blooded racer could afford, enjoy and use every day. A car like this, a much improved version of the brand's fourth generation Focus ST. The Focus ST is the kind of car that's always democratised performance, allowing you to approach the speed of a yesteryear supercar within the body and the budget of something much more ordinary. Other brands promise this kind of thing, but in reality often do little more than bolt a set of spoilers and a turbo onto something more ordinary. Ford, though, has a different approach. The old blue oval brand boasting a long history of developing proper performance versions of its mainstream models, designed by enthusiasts to be driven by enthusiasts. The very first Focus ST was the Mark I ST170 model of 2002, but the first properly quick one was the Mark II model of 2005. That car was rapid, both in speed and in the way that its 225 PS, two and a half litre turbo engine drained its fuel tank in next to no time. Its replacement, a third generation model launched in 2012, then updated in 2015, was better. It primarily used the two litre EcoBoost petrol power plant and handled responsively, but arguably wasn't quite special enough. The fourth generation Focus ST of 2018, though, got a power plant that was courtesy of an all-new engine, the 2.3-litre version we'd previously seen both in the Focus RS and the Mustang, here delivering 280 PS, 30 PS more than the previous 2-litre EcoBoost unit. And that power was more usable thanks to a couple of Focus ST firsts, selectable drive modes and for the first time in a Ford front wheel drive model, an electronic limited slip differential to help get the power down through the bends, some compensation for the continuing lack of a four wheel drive option. Despite all of that, that Mark IV Focus ST didn't make quite as much of a market impact as the Blue Oval brand had hoped, even when the Mark introduced a more dynamic ST edition variant in August 2021, using the Ford Performance Division's track-tuned adjustable coilover suspension system. Lots of hope, then, is being pinned on a more significantly updated take on this C519 series model, the facelifted version of the Mark IV Focus ST that we're going to drive here. Announced at the end of 2021, and on sale since spring 2022. It gets the smarter cabin and the upgraded connectivity that the original fourth generation Focus ST was lacking. And for the circuit crowd, that coilover suspension system has once again reappeared as part of an optional ST track pack that also includes oversized Brembo brakes and lighter low mass wheels. It all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? Which is just as well, given that this car must take on an all-new segment contender like the sixth-generation Honda Civic Type R and the Cooper Leon, as well as this Focus model's continuing arch-rival, Volkswagen's Golf GTI, and updated versions of strong segment contenders like the Hyundai i30N, the BMW M135i xDrive, and the Mercedes-AMG A35 4Matic. So, how does this Ford stack up against hot hatches of that calibre? Well, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out.
This improved version of the Focus ST doesn't feature any dynamic or engineering changes, but you could argue that it didn't really need any. At the original launch of this model in 2018, the big difference over its rivals lay in what was different beneath the bonnet. Every other hot hatch contender in this class uses two litre power, as did the previous generation Mark III version of this car. But from the very start with this C519 series ST model, the Ford Performance Division wanted to take a different route. Forced to abandon their much-loved fire-breathing Focus RS, they retained that model's 2.3-litre four-cylinder engine in a detuned 280 PS form for this ST. And that's still what we have here. Sure enough, get yourself behind the wheel, then press the starter button. And the burbling soundtrack sounds distinctively different from anything else in the segment. So, what's in store on the road? Let's find out. Lots was new with this fourth generation model when we first tried it a few years back. Not only that engine, but a lighter weight C2 platform. Plus, all kinds of modern engineering tech was now available, including optional things like adaptive damping and a paddle shift auto gearbox. Both are fitted here, along with a standard drive mode system that, in this updated model, displays with colourful graphics on the two newly installed dashboard screens for the three main drive modes, normal, slippery and sport. Lots of elements then to this fourth generation Focus ST model's potentially engaging recipe. Does it all work? Well, in answering that, we'll start with that petrol engine, which is now the only one available in this model. The previous alternative 190 PS 2 litre Eco Blue diesel unit having been dropped. As part of this 2.3 litre EcoBoost power plant's installation, it's paired with a clever anti-turbo lag system from the Ford GT supercar. This holds the throttle open for three seconds after you come off the throttle to prevent the reversal of airflow into the turbo, keeping it primed and spinning for swifter response. That's enough, the brand reckons, to make this ST quicker in the mid-range than that old Focus RS, which is somewhat incredible, given that its output is 70 PS less. In testing, early versions of this fourth generation Focus ST emphasise that point by proving slightly quicker than that old Focus RS around the infamous Nürburgring Norschleifer, in the dry at least. Unlike the RS, and unlike in some key rivals, you don't get four-wheel drive here. The ST engine's lusty 420 Newton meter torque figure on Overboost helps explain this strong showing, that output significantly greater than you'll find in most direct segment rivals. A Golf GTI has just 370 Newton meters, for instance. So yes, that extra 300cc of capacity really does make a difference, especially in the mid-range, the EcoBoost power plant punching you in the back from 2,500 RPM with an unbroken wave of thrust that only begins to tail off at around 4,500 RPM when the red line starts to loom into view. You see the difference in the benchmark performance stats too. Resta 62 in this car is dispatched in just 5.7 seconds, which means that this Ford manages to be quicker than a vastly more expensive Honda Civic Type R with 49 PS more power. And a Focus ST would easily win a traffic light Grand Prix against that arch rival Golf GTI. That needs 6.2 seconds for the same sprint. The top speed in this Ford is limited to 155 miles an hour, but if unrestricted, would probably top 170, and apparently did during autobahn tests around Ford's German headquarters. The figures I've just quoted assume you've opted for the six-speed manual transmission most will want in this car. Here, though, we thought we'd try the alternative seven-speed power shift auto, a gearbox which features an adaptive shift scheduling system able to assess individual driving styles to optimise gear shift timings. We think it works well, though we're a bit disappointed by Ford's penny-pinching provision of cheap plastic paddle shifters for the steering wheel. If we were buying, though, we'd want the ordinary stick shifter, not least because it alone can be ordered with three essential extra-cost features. Launch control, gear shift lights 
and rev matching. Launch control provides for Grand Prix style starts and is achieved with best results by revving from rest to about 2,300 RPM, then thrusting in the clutch as fast as you dare. Rev matching is another feature borrowed from the brand's GT supercar, allowing for what's called flat shifting, which relieves you of the need to lift off the throttle between upward gear changes and briefly blips the throttle in an F1 style touch during down changes. Experts well versed in the kind of heel and toe technique used in race driving will find this unnecessary. But if you're a more typical buyer of this car, you're going to want to play with that at the first opportunity. We ought to underline the rather disappointing fact that none of these three performance features are fitted as standard, but they might as well be because they come as part of the extra cost performance pack that 99% of Focus ST buyers will pay only a little more to get, if only to preserve residuals. With this pack, as we've said, you only get launch control, gear shift lights and rev matching with manual transmission. But with either gearbox fitted, there are two core performance pack features we think you'll want. The first is adaptive damping, Ford's CCT or continuously controlled damping system, which activates through the different normal, slippery and sport drive modes we mentioned earlier. Settings that are joined by an additional option when the performance pack is fitted, an extra circuit focus racetrack mode. That's nice to have but most of the time we think you'll be happy with the sport mode for spirited driving, a setting which has its own dedicated button and in which the car instantly feels more alert. Activated and throttle response sharpens, the steering gains more heft, there's a deeper burble from the exhaust and with CCD fitted the dampers tense more firmly. Unfortunately though, the mode system doesn't include the kind of individual option that some rival models offer, enabling you to tailor specific ride and handling preferences to a one-touch setting. So it's just as well that the Ford performance engineers have judged the various sport setting parameters so carefully. They've done a good job with the steering too. Response from the thick rimmed wheel might feel a bit sudden and dramatic on first acquaintance, but once you adjust, the immediacy you get back through the helm becomes an integral part of the vivacious handling that makes this car the accomplished shopping rocket it undoubtedly is. Apparently, the rack ratio is 11 to 6 to 1, which is quicker than that used on a Ferrari 488 GTB. It's certainly effective in masking the one and a half ton curb weight of this car, being basically the same rack you get in a Fiesta ST. 15% faster than a standard Focus at two turns lock to lock, but with unique geometry and a few other tweaks for even sharper responses. The faster you go through the bends, the better it feels. Get confident through those turns and you'll start to appreciate this fourth generation model's impressive reserves of traction, much of which comes courtesy of this car's standard fit ELSD or Electronic Limited Slip Differential. During fast cornering this uses hydraulically activated clutches to redistribute up to 100% of available engine torque to the tyre with most traction so as to counteract wheel spin. The result is increased agility and a significant reduction in the understeer during acceleration that you'd otherwise feel through each corner and when powering out of it. The ELSD setup certainly pretty clever, able to preemptively adjust torque distribution using inputs from powertrain and vehicle dynamic sensors rather than simply responding to wheel spin as a conventional torque vectoring system would. You might have read about the pre-2018 Mark III generation Focus ST model's occasional tendency towards torque steer, the feeling of the wheel writhing in your hands under harsh acceleration. Well, that's been pretty much eradicated here, something Ford has made sure of by fitting what's called a torque disturbance reduction system to the electric power steering, which dials out torque steer by counter-torquing the steering column on those occasions when the activation of the ELSD diff might get quite aggressive. So yes, we're talking of a significant level of dynamic prowess here, something that rather impressively Ford managed to deliver without affecting what for us was the most impressive thing about previous versions of this car, their ride and handling balance. 
This is where so many hot hatches come unstuck. The firm suspension needed for terrific tarmac handling, inflicting upon you the need for an uncomfortably jiggly ride. Here, it's different, even if you haven't stretched to that CCD adaptive damping system we just mentioned. Yes, as you would expect, in all Focus STs, the SLA suspension spring and damper units are set up a lot more tautly than they would be in an ordinary Focus. 20% stiffer at the front and 13% stiffer at the rear. But this car's C2 platform, which brought a 20% increase in torsional rigidity over the pre-2018 Mark III model, allowed the engineers to build some give into the damping that you simply don't feel in most rival models. As a result, whether the lap you're completing is of Silverstone or the Surbiton one-way system, this Ford will be fine with it. There are some sophisticated extra damping features too, including a pothole detection system that plays its part in allowing this car to cruise over undulations and tarmac tears more easily than would most rivals in this segment. That might encourage you to use your Focus ST on longer trips where you'll also appreciate very reasonable refinement. This can be aided by an optional adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but also includes lane centering assist that will subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the centre of your lane. You won't, after all, always be wanting to throw this car through the back doubles. But when you do, this Focus ST's character can change with the stab of your right foot and the press of a button, accompanied by the appropriately serious sounding burbling engine note we mentioned earlier, enhanced via the cabin speakers. Earlier versions of the previous generation car used a rather synthesized version of this sort of fake sound setup. One writer described the result as sounding like a Flemmy Rottweiler hidden inside the dashboard, but with this fourth generation model, it's been done rather more realistically, which will get you more in the mood for the kind of uber quick secondary road point to point driving this Ford is so very good at. In fourth generation form, its added bite is aided by grippy Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres, a ride height lowered by 10 millimetres and thicker anti-roll bars, all of which makes a big difference. So does the almost perfect weighting you get with all the main controls, especially the brakes, which have been appropriately uprated too. They're fitted out with an electronic booster that continually adjusts the biting point to keep pedal feel consistent. Plus, Ford installed large 330 millimeter discs all round that are more suited to circuit work, being able to resist fade four times better than those of the old model. Not that this car is really intended as a regular track day tearaway, not in its standard form anyway. If you do regularly want to take your Focus ST on circuit events, we'd recommend you upgrade its specification with the optional ST Track Pack that Ford offers, something only available with a manual transmission hatch model. This gets you the Ford Performance Division's more dynamic, adjustable coilover suspension system, plus uprated Brembo front brakes with 363mm discs and lighter 19-inch Ford Performance alloy wheels shod with stickier Pirelli P0 Corsa tyres. In that kind of track pack spec, a Focus ST could be considered a proper alternative to a harder-edged hot hatch like a Honda Civic Type R. In its standard form though, as tested here, this Ford isn't really that sort of car. Think of it more like a Golf GTI with a bit of added extra bite and you'll be closer to the mark. Opinions differ wildly on what a hot hatch of this kind should look like. The sector offers everything from the button-down subtlety of the German premium models to the wilder extremes of the Hyundai i30N and the Honda Civic Type R. It fits with every other aspect of this Ford's character, but it offers something in between. Perhaps not as overtly hot hatch in its pavement segment as some might like, and without doubt a kind of compromise, but a decently dynamic looking one, at least with this optional mean green paintwork anyway. 
Overtaking presence is key with a car like this, of course, and this revitalised Focus ST gets plenty of it with a higher nose and a sleeker bonnet which retains twin creases on either side. The brand badge has now been relocated to this larger front grille, which, like the lower intake, features the black honeycomb detailing that's as much a mark of this model's status as the ST badge near the number plate. The redesigned LED headlights are placed as far into the corners of the car as possible to maximise the vehicle's width and stance and include dynamic matrix functionality, along with clever glare-free lighting. As before, overtly angled lower wing elements channel air into the air curtain inlets for improved aerodynamic performance. The profile perspective depends on your choice between this five-door hatch body shape or the alternative estate version, which is 296 millimetres longer. Either way, a full body styling kit is, of course, a continuing part of the ST package and includes these bulging side skirts that emphasise the 10mm lowered chassis height. Here we've got a standard model, which has these 19-inch 5x2 spoke magnetite matte wheels featuring Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres and finished with red brake calipers. Opt for the alternative track pack version of the hatch model and these rims get replaced by lighter Ford Performance wheels shod with stickier Pirelli P0 Corsa rubber. That track pack variant is also set apart with black finishing for the roof, the door mirrors, the spoiler and the rear diffuser. At the rear, the main change with all versions of this updated model is the adoption of these revised two-piece tail lamps, which get smoked lenses, feature full LED illumination and have an internal design with a darker central section and an eye-catching loop light pattern. As before, there's a large roof spoiler and an overt lower diffuser style section embellished by a large single tailpipe on either side. As usual, though, What's more important is the stuff you can't see, namely the light, stiff and strong C2 structure that made its debut back in 2018. When this fourth generation model was first launched, a chassis which also underpins this car's close cousin, the Cougar SUV. Ultimately then, a neat but subtle visual update's taken place here, but at the same time, a lot of the really nice features we liked before have been retained. The My Key functionality, for instance, which allows you to program this ignition key to set a maximum speed limit, a seatbelt reminder, and even control the volume of the audio system, all of which will give you a bit more peace of mind if you feel brave enough to loan your Focus ST out to someone else. Time to take a look inside. Right, what's it like at the wheel? Well, if your perspective is that Ford has been a touch conservative with the exterior styling, then you won't change that opinion once inside because at first glance, it doesn't feel all that much different from an ordinary ST line variant in the standard range. The main changes with this revised ST model lie in what you lose and what's been gained. Well, we'll start with the positive first. The big improvement in cabin quality over the original version of this fourth generation design. That comes courtesy of this all new 13.2 inch central SYNC 4 landscape touchscreen and an accompanying 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster that replaces the old analogue dials. We were less pleased to discover that the grippy Recaro seats that really used to lift this cabin have been ditched in favour of these rather less visually arresting in-house designed performance seats. More on them in a moment. As before, a package of little extra performance themed touches aims to set this ST apart. Alloy pedal covers, faux carbon trim inlays, grey stitched floor mats and branded scuff plates on the sills number among the embellishments. With the manual gearbox model, you'd get a rather lovely leather-stitched gear knob too. Unfortunately, with an automatic variant like this, you're stuck with this rather less attractive and rather less ergonomic dial selector. We'd have forgiven Ford for that if it had installed a pair of properly tactile steering wheel paddle shifters for this auto variant, but no, there are these cheap plastic ones instead. 
Whatever your transmission choice, as before, you're perfectly placed behind the thick-rimmed, leather-stitched sports steering wheel, which is where you'll find the buttons for this car's all-important driving mode system. The ST engineers wanted them positioned there so that they would be easier to access at speed. Your chosen drive setting will be displayed on that big new SYNC 4 central screen we just mentioned, which has inhaled all of the previous ventilation knobs and buttons, meaning that Ford has had to completely redesign the centre stack, which isn't the sort of thing designers would usually expect to have to do with a mere facelift. We'd hope that as part of that, there might have been a step up in perceived fascia quality, particularly in view of the much higher asking prices, but the previous feeling of this car very much having been built to a price still persists. It's just a few little touches that make the difference between this Ford and, say, a Volkswagen Group product like a Golf GTI or a Cupra Leon, the paddle shifters we've already mentioned. And would you get fake door stitching or a centre console box fashioned from a cheap plastic moulding in a Golf? We think not. Of course, if you happen to be coming to this car from a previous generation Focus ST rather than a competing product, your perspective might be rather different. At its launch back in 2018, this fourth generation design was definitely much improved inside. The soft touch dash top, the flock line storage areas, this electronic handbrake and these elegant fascia trimming strips all will be impressive to long-time Focus ST owners who haven't tried one for a few years. It's just that the segment standard in this regard has moved on faster than Ford has felt able to go. You might be prepared to forgive much, though, for the advantage of being able to enjoy this segment-leadingly large centre SYNC 4 touchscreen. Everything you need is here, complete with crystal clear graphics, over-the-air updates and easy functionality. Normally, we're not too keen on climate controls, being relegated to screen submenus, but this setup works reasonably well. The ventilation functions permanently displayed along the monitor's bottom edge, though finding the one you want requires you to take your eyes off the road for longer than you'd need to simply use a switch or a button. As is now normal with this type of setup, the home screen can be split, usually as here, between navigation, audio and phone functions, with everything else you'll need hidden behind three subsections, settings, features and mobile apps. It's the features section you'll be using most. Scroll around other parts of the screen and you'll find a wide range of features. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, of course. A new connected navigation system that includes TomTom, Tom, real life and predictive traffic information with Garmin in-cloud routing. A valet parking feature, a vehicle Wi-Fi hotspot and the Ford Assistant speech recognition system that works in 15 languages and can combine with internet searches conducted by the built-in Ford Pass Connect media system. Plus, using the Ford Pass app, a range of connected services can be accessed from anywhere using your smartphone. Anything else you want to know will be covered off by the 12.3-inch digital instrument cluster we mentioned earlier. This widescreen layout springs into life with fancy graphics, though unlike some other rival model virtual cockpit screens, it can't be specified to show full-width navigation mapping. Select one of the various driving modes and it alerts your attention with eye-catching graphics. The display is based around a central area that can be configured in various customizable ways, flanked by two outer virtual dials, a speedo on the left and a rev counter on the right, which initially look rather curious due to the absence of outer bezels. Between these gauges, you can prioritise readouts for audio, nav or phone info, or choose select screen, which allows you to choose display options from quite an extensive list, though we're not quite sure why Ford feels the need to restrict you to just seven choices. A click on this steering wheel button can scroll you through readouts for things like fuel economy, trip computer info, tyre pressures, an eco behaviour option and various performance gauges which show you things like turbo PSI and oil temperature. Disappointingly, given the kind of car this is, a lap time is missing though. Anyway, if all of this represents information overload, you can also select a calm screen at which point nothing at all will be shown between the gauges.
it's all very clear and informative, making rather unnecessary the optional head-up display we have here that projects its images onto a rising glass panel below the base of the windscreen. You view the instrument binnacle through a wheel with a wide range of adjustment, properly placed pedals help you get comfortable and your view out is aided by relatively thin A-pillars. Rearward vision's pretty uncluttered too, and both all-round parking sensors and a rear-view camera come as standard. Here, we've gone a stage further by trying an improved active park assist system, able to steer you into either parallel or perpendicular spaces at the press of a button. Now, earlier, we mentioned the new Ford Performance seats. They're actually very good, as was necessary, to get the coveted seal of approval from the leading German spinal health organisation, Action Gesunder Rücken, better known as AGR, who campaign for healthier backs. These chairs include 14-way powered adjustment and a four-way adjustable lumbar support. The more we've lived with this car, the more we've appreciated the little touches that Ford's included. The standard 675-watt 10-speaker B&O premium audio system is an obvious example. But we've also appreciated things like driver's seat lumbar adjustment and a quick-clear heated windscreen for frosty mornings. You additionally get an electronic handbrake, not our favourite modern-era automotive development, but one that does undeniably free up a useful amount of extra cabin stowage space between the seats. In this area, there's a coin tray behind the handbrake switch and to the left of it, illuminated cup holders. Now, while we're talking cabin storage, we'll tell you that the flock-lined door pockets are a touch on the small side, but you do get a big storage area at the base of the centre stack that includes a 12-volt socket and both USB-A and USB-C charging ports, plus a standard wireless phone charging mat. An overhead compartment for your sunglasses is missing, but the lidded storage bin between the seats we referenced earlier includes a lift-out top tray and has a shallow cubby in front of it. Plus, ticket clips are built into both sun visors and you get a reasonably sized glove box too, though unfortunately this area can't be cooled. Time to move rearwards. Now, prior to 2018, when this Mark IV model was originally launched, the Focus model line couldn't really offer you much more backseat space than you get in some larger super minis. But to some extent, a 53mm wheelbase increase and 18mm of additional exterior length took care of that. Lots of new segment designs have been launched since, though. So, will the space provided by this Ford still feel competitive for those travelling in the rear? Let's see. By and large, yes, the space on offer here can certainly be bettered by quite a number of class rivals, but it is at least now competitive, certainly to a rival Volkswagen Golf GTI and better than a Hyundai i30N, helped by the decent foot space provided beneath the front seats. We also approve of this low centre transmission tunnel, though a centre-seated adult will still be as relatively uncomfortable on longer trips as they would normally be in such a position in a car of this class. What else? Well, the head restraints are of the kind that dig uncomfortably into your shoulder uh, until you raise them. And we think twice before specifying the optional panoramic glass roof, which reduces the otherwise very acceptable headroom level by a few inches. Nor do you really need it because the relatively large expanse of side window glass makes this part of the cabin feel quite airy. All variants offer decently sized rear door pockets. Outer Isofix child seat attachments, netted seat back storage areas, coat hooks in the grab handles, and there's the usual centre armrest with cup holders. Plus, Ford provides these useful centre USB A and USB C sockets. Let's finish by taking a look in the cargo area, pausing on the way in pulling out these wide opening doors to notice these neat optional door edge protectors that pop out to prevent car park dings. And the easy fuel filler neck designed as usual on Ford cars to make it impossible for you to inadvertently put diesel into a petrol model or vice versa. Anyway, yes, the boot. Now, this fourth generation Focus ST has proved to be the only one designed to date 
with a relatively class competitive level of cargo capacity. Though by segment standards, it still isn't anything to write home about. Load to seat back height in this hatch model and you get 290 litres, 68 litres less than a lesser focus would offer because of the room needed for this flagship model's B and O premium audio system underfloor subwoofer. To give you some class perspective, a Volkswagen Golf GTI has 381 litres to seat back height level. You'd have to load to the roof to match that in this Ford, in which case there's 373 litres of space available. At least this Focus ST comes with a mini spare wheel as standard, which isn't always the case in this segment. If you want to carry longer items without folding the rear seats, there's the convenience of this centre ski hatch. There's no adjustable height boot floor in this hatchback body shape, but there are bag hooks on both sides along with a dim sidewall light and the usual floor tie down points, plus a hazard warning triangle sits beneath the parcel shelf. Obviously, if carriage capacity is particularly important to you, you'll be looking at the estate version of this car. A variant Ford has actually put quite a lot of effort into improving as part of this facelift. The ST station wagons, 525 litre luggage area, 660 litres loaded to the roof, is now trimmed in cropped carpet with shorter fibres that make it easier to clean. Plus, there's an additional side load net for smaller items and twin LED lights to provide clearer illumination when loading in the dark. The estate model's adjustable load floor now has a central hinge allowing it to be folded to create a vertical divider that locks into place at a 90 degree angle, creating two separate spaces to keep items more securely in place. Plus, the estate model's load area also now features a wet zone with a load floor liner inserted into the space to provide water resistance against items such as wet suits and umbrellas. The water resistant lining can be removed from the space for easy draining or cleaning and the area can be enclosed from the rest of the boot with floor folded down or separated with the vertical divider to create wet and dry zones. Neat! With both body styles, the seats have a conventional 60-40 split and also in both cases, you have to go round to the side doors to release shoulder catches before you can flatten them because Ford hasn't provided sidewall catches for that purpose in the boot. When everything's pushed forward in this hatch, you'll have 1,250 litres to play with, up to roof level. For the ST Estate, the capacity figure is 1,576 litres. The Estate gained an extra 43 millimetres of roof height as part of its fourth generation redesign, an increase apparently calculated so as to enable owners to comfortably accommodate a dog crate. Go for that station wagon variant and auto folding easy fold. Rear seat backs come as standard. Plus, you can have a gesture controlled powered tailgate if you're prepared to pay the extra for it. The pricing proposition for this Ford is quite a bit different this time round. The last time we tested a Focus ST, the original version of this fourth generation model in 2018, prices started at well under £33,000. At the time of this test, those figures had risen to a starting point of around 37000 for this hatch body style, around £10,000 more than a Fiesta ST, with an extra £1,400 to find if you want the estate version. All Focus ST variants are front-driven and with diesel now dumped for ST folk, you can now only have the 2.3-litre petrol model, though for another £1,450, there's the option of a seven-speed auto gearbox paddle shift option if you want it, and we're trying that here. These asking prices, which can range up to nearly £40,000 for an ST automatic estate, are knocking on the door of premium territory, though to be fair, as we'll see in a moment, they also represent the going rate for a serious hot hatch in the family hatchback class these days. And in return for the cash, you do get one single very well kitted out level of trim. Time for a bit more detail on that value proposition. 
Now, the Focus ST is no longer the most affordable car in its segment. For real value here, you'd need to turn to the Hyundai i30N, which also offers 280 PS, but at the time of this test, costs from just over £35,000. That's about the same price as a Skoda Octavia VRS, but that car has quite a power deficit to this Ford with a 2-litre TSI engine putting out 245 PS, the same power plant as you'd find in a Volkswagen Golf GTI, which hardly coincidentally costs virtually the same as a Focus ST. If you're a potential Golf GTI customer and making comparisons, you might struggle with that, given that the Volkswagen is nearly a second slower to 62 miles an hour than this Ford and is less luxuriously equipped. Another Volkswagen Group hot hatch is arguably a better bet, the Cupra Leon, which in fast 300 TSI VZ2 form is similarly priced but uses a much fizzier 300 PS version of that Golf's 2-litre TSI power plant. If you'd like four-wheel drive from a car in this segment, your options start at around the £40,000 mark, either with the Audi S3 or the BMW M135i X-Drive. A Mercedes-AMG A35 4Matic costs around £46,000, about the same as a front-driven Honda Civic Type R which despite having an extra 49 PS over this Focus ST, is no quicker to 62 miles an hour than this Ford. Bear in mind that if you're looking at this Focus ST in a state form, you've far fewer alternative options. The Cupra Leon 300 TSI estate being the most credible one. For a potential Focus ST estate customer, a Skoda Octavia VRS estate wouldn't be fast enough, while a Volkswagen Golf R estate or a Mercedes AMG CLA 35 formatic would perhaps be too pricey. Anyway, enough with comparisons. Let's say that you've considered all of this and concluded that it is a Focus ST of some sort that you really want. Then you're going to need to know just how generous Ford's been when it comes to standard equipment. Now, we mentioned earlier that there was just a single well-specified equipment level. That includes a full ST body styling kit incorporating a large rear spoiler. Plus, you get unique ST sport suspension and dynamic matrix LED headlights with glare-free lighting. In addition, there are 19-inch 5x2-spoke alloy wheels in a magnetite matte finish with red brake calipers along with ST-engineered features like the brand's ELSD electronic limited slip differential and a driving modes package with normal, slippery and sport settings. Other equipment elements a Focus ST buyer can expect run to adaptive cruise control, LED tail lights, rear privacy glass, all-round parking sensors, a reversing camera, a park assist auto parking package and the Ford key free keyless entry system. Plus, there's the useful Ford My Key setup that recognizes your favorite driving settings from an individually programmed ignition key. All of this is in addition to the usual features you'd expect to find on a Focus variant of this price. Things like auto headlamps, power folding mirrors, a useful quick clear heated windscreen, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm and a mini spare wheel rather than one of those irritating tyre repair kits. Inside, the key inclusion lies with a pair of race-style Ford Performance front sports seats which are heated, trimmed with contrast red stitching and upholstered in a combination of ebony cloth and a man-made leather material called Sensico. A heated sports steering wheel, alloy pedal covers, faux carbon trim inlays, an ST embossed aluminium gear knob, grey stitched floor mats and branded scuff plates on the sills complete the ST embellishments. Otherwise, it's exactly as it would be in a well-specified model in the mainstream part of the Focus range, which means you get a 12.3-inch full digital cluster screen to replace the previous analogue dials in the instrument binnacle, plus dual-zone electronic air temperature control, a six-way power-adjustable driver's seat, a rear-view camera, a wireless charging pad, a load-through ski hatch and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror infotainment's taken care of by the brand's latest Sync 4 
13.2 inch center dash screen, which here includes everything the company's technology is capable of. That means you get navigation, embedded voice control, emergency assistance, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, plus a 10 speaker, 675 watt B and O, 360 degree premium sound system and Wi-Fi connectivity that comes courtesy of the built-in modem included in this car's Ford Pass Connect package. Most Focus STs are ordered with the brand's optional performance pack, and you know we've been trying that here, which can only be had with the hatch body style and ought to be standard, but costs £850 more. That extra payment gets you adaptive damping, the brand's CCD, or Continuously Controlled Damping System, and an additional, more focused drive mode racetrack, which you'll want if you ever take this car on a circuit day. If your ST has manual transmission, the performance pack will also include launch control for Grand Prix-style starts, a shift indicator, and Ford's clever rev matching system, so you can sound like Fernando Alonso as you're down changing through the short shifting six speed box. If you want to go further, then a much more serious spend, about £3,000, gets you the optional ST track pack, only available with a manual transmission hatch model. If you're going to take part in circuit days with this car, then you really need to budget for this extra outlay because it gets you the Ford Performance Division's more dynamic, adjustable coilover suspension system, plus uprated Brembo front brakes with 363mm discs and lighter 19-inch Ford Performance alloy wheels shod with stickier Pirelli P0 Corsa tyres. There's also a slightly different look as part of this pack, thanks to the black finishing for the roof, the spoiler, the mirrors and the rear diffuser. As for the other options, well, you might want to look at a couple of things that we have fitted here. Uh, the head-up display and the parking pack, which includes door edge protectors, a rear wide view camera, and most notably, gives you Ford's latest Active Park Assist 2 system, which can steer you into both horizontal and perpendicular spaces. You can also add in an opening panoramic glass roof and on the estate, a powered tailgate with hands-free operation. Practical extras include Ford Performance branded floor mats, a boot liner, a foldable transport box, a reversible load compartment mat, a tow bar and the roof crossbars that will allow you to add a roof box or carriers for skis or snowboards. Paintwork's going to be important to you as well if you're a typical ST buyer. Unless you specify this car in solid race red, you're going to need to be paying your Ford dealer extra for your choice of colour. Appallingly, even solid frozen white costs £250 extra. But beyond that, there's a single premium body colour, Agate Black, and four exclusive body shades, Magnetic, Fantastic Red, Desert Island Blue, and, as in this case, the emotive Mean Green, a Focus ST signature shade added as part of this update for extroverts only. OK, enough with general spec and options, on to safety. Now, as you'd expect, all Focus ST models come with autonomous emergency braking. Ford calls its system pre-collision assist with pedestrian detection, as usual with these kinds of setups. This one works as you drive to scan the road ahead for potential collision hazards with a particular focus on pedestrians. It even works at night. If something you might be about to hit is detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting collision. Should you still manage to have an accident, a post-collision braking system automatically applies the brakes to try and help avoid the car spinning off to hit something else. 
There's also auto high beam, which automatically dips your headlights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. A lane keeping alert system that warns you if you veer out of lane. And a lane keeping aid that will automatically steer you gently back to where you should be. Plus, Ford provides an intelligent speed assist speed limiter to help you keep safe and legal through urban areas. In addition, the SYNC infotainment package, as usual, includes an emergency assist feature that will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. Ford also provides a feature that prompts you to check the rear seats for occupants when you leave the car. Disappointingly, the driver assist pack, which was previously standard on earlier versions of this fourth generation model now costs £550 extra. We have it fitted to this test car. Here, the key feature is an adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but also includes lane centering assist that will subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the centre of your lane. This is about the closest this focus can get to autonomous driving tech. That driver assistance pack also includes various other camera-driven features. Driver alert, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. Evasive steering assist, which helps drivers steer around stopped or slower vehicles to help avoid collisions. And traffic sign recognition which reads speed signs, displaying them on the dash as you pass. That speed sign information can then combine with navigation data so that the intelligent speed assist speed limiter can be programmed to automatically set itself whenever you enter a speed limited zone, not allowing you to exceed the legal figure. That way, you should never get a speeding ticket ever again, in theory anyway. Don't you just love technology? If you still want to go further, as an option, it's also possible to order a blind spot information system with cross traffic alert setup. This works on the move to warn you if you're about to pull out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And it also warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. Of course, this Ford includes a standard, all the more conventional safety features you'd expect in this day and age. So you can tick off ESP stability control, traction control and an ABS braking system with EBA or emergency brake assist for panic stops. There are also the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags. Take all of these many and varied safety features into account and you'll not be surprised to hear that this car achieved a full house, five star overall safety rating from Euro NCAP, who specifically gave it a very creditable 85% rating for adult occupant protection and an 87% rating for child occupant protection. When we first tested this fourth generation Focus ST back in 2018, we had some concerns about the switch from 2 litre to 2.3 litre power. After all, on the previous occasion, the Focus ST had moved up from a 2 litre engine to something a bit larger, which is what happened in the switch from the Mark 1 ST 170 of 2002 to the 2.5 litre Mark 2 version of this car launched in 2005. The result was a huge increase in real world fuel consumption and CO2 emissions. As it turned out, the efficiency downside this time round didn't turn out to be too onerous. And as you might expect, given the lack of mechanical change as part of this facelift, the stats now remain pretty much as they were before. For the manual gearbox variant, you're looking at 35.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 183 grams per kilometre of CO2. For this auto, the figures are virtually the same, 35.8 mpg and 182 grams per kilometre. There's no efficiency downsize in choosing the estate body style. To give you some class perspective, these are very similar to the kinds of returns you get from either a Hyundai i30N or a Honda Civic Type R. Though it should be pointed out that those two cars are the least efficient models in the segment. 
This Ford suffers a little thanks to its curb weight here, which comes in at 1,433 kilos for the hatch and 1,468 for the estate. The highest efficiency standards in this class are set by the Volkswagen Golf GTI and the BMW M135i, which both return 38.2 mpg on the combined cycle and just under 170 grams per kilometre of CO2. Overall, we think that all of that will probably be irrelevant for most likely owners. Quite frankly, if you average more than 25 miles per gallon in this car, then you're not using it properly and it deserves a better home. You know where we are. To get close to the improved class efficiency standard, Ford's worked hard with his fourth generation Focus ST model range. Design improvements include sleeker bodywork, air curtain technology to reduce turbulence around the wheels, a C2 platform that on its own saves 88 kilograms of weight, and an engine stop start system. But a lot of that has merely offset the additional weight of this Mark IV design's extra equipment and stronger, stiffer body. What else? Well, we'll tell you about servicing, which is required every two years or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. And maintenance bookings can be done online through the My Ford portal. This is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme that wraps up all of the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle that includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts and highlights any work required with a red, amber and green traffic light warning to rank items that need attention in order of importance. There's also the Ford Service app that you can download to your phone for free. It lets you locate your nearest dealer and make a booking, plus has a couple of extra elements allowing you to find petrol stations and including a Park Me feature that remembers where you left your focus so you won't have to hunt for it, say, in busy multi-storey car parks. On to insurance, which is rated at 27E for all ST versions and a rather less reasonable 34E for the petrol model. Finally, let's consider the question of residual values. Well, this area has never been a Focus ST strong point, but experts predict that this improved Mark IV model will return around 44% of its original value over the industry standard three year or 36,000 mile ownership period it'll be 46% for the estate. In other words, it'll be close to cars like the Cupra Leon and the Hyundai i30N, but still some way off the residuals of a Honda Civic Type R or a Volkswagen Golf GTI. To maximize your potential residuals, make sure that you tick the box for the performance pack in specifying this car. Knowledgeable used market buyers aren't going to be keen on versions of this fast forward that lack that crucial inclusion. Speaking of performance, those bespoke Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres aren't going to be cheap to replace, so bear that in mind before you go track day showboating. As for the warranty, well, like all Fords, this one comes with a 36-month or 60,000-mile package that also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. And on top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee for 12 years. Ford also offers the chance to extend this cover to either four years and 80,000 miles or five years and 100,000 miles. Ford hasn't set out to make the fastest hot hatch in the Golf GTI segment here or the most wild looking or the most track ready. If in buying a car of this kind, your overriding priorities lie in any of these three areas, there are other rivals we'd point you towards. But if what you'd really like is a car that can combine all those virtues in one very complete package, we'd absolutely direct you to include a Focus ST high up on your wish list. There's a difference between a mere hot hatch and a properly developed performance car. And if you want to know exactly what that is, we'd recommend that you try this Focus, then go and drive one of its rivals. Some may be slightly quicker, others may feel more upmarket, but few, if any, are so enjoyable to drive quickly. This model line has a rich seam of form in delivering that attribute, which explains why we've rated previous cars in this model line so highly. We really liked the original version of this fourth generation Focus ST when we first tried it too. 
No, it wasn't quite as involving and rewarding as its little Fiesta ST stablemate, but with its limited slip diff, driving modes and optional adaptive damping and rev matching software, there was no doubt that it had become far more sophisticated and a car that felt far more comfortable transmitting its torque to the tarmac. Only the cabin let the side down a bit, as did the screen tech on offer within it. So, in improving both these things with this facelifted design, Ford's added the final missing piece of the jigsaw with this car's ownership proposition. It's still not perfect, of course. Some might feel the looks are a little on the subtle side. And even though the interior has been vastly improved, you still wouldn't think you were in a car from a premium brand. Plus, it would have been nice if Ford had been a touch less ambitious with its pricing. And we don't really understand why the crucial performance pack isn't standardised. These things apart, though, there's little else to criticise here. This Focus ST is arguably the very definition of what a car of this kind should be. A guilt-free fast hatch with near supercar performance and technology that's relatively affordable and perfectly practical. You get a class-leading ride and handling balance, a state versatility if you want it, and the option of a track pack that'll allow you to frighten far more exotic machinery in this ST on circuit days. All in all, a car that deserves to be remembered fondly in a fine tradition of fast forwards.